Hello everyone, this is Victor here. Welcome back to the Intelligent Research Channel. In this video, I'm going to analyze Nvidia stock to see if it's still a buy, hold, or sell now. At the time of making this video, Nvidia stock has become the most valuable semiconductor company in the world, and its market cap is very close to one trillion. The biggest reason is that Nvidia is benefiting the most from the current AI boom. There's a large demand for alternative AI, large language models, and AI applications that require the most powerful GPUs for accelerated computing. All these AI workloads, AI training, AI inference, and AI applications require the most powerful AI chips such as H100 and A100 GPUs from NVIDIA. For example, OpenAI uses thousands of NVIDIA A100 GPUs to train ChatGPT's large language models. In fact, over a year ago, I made this NVIDIA stock analysis video. I was very bullish on NVIDIA stock because I knew NVIDIA dominance in both the discrete GPU market and the data center GPU market. I knew that NVIDIA's high-end GPUs are much ahead of AMD's GPUs and Intel's GPUs. Since I made my first NVIDIA stock analysis video, NVIDIA stock has outperformed the S&P function substantially during this period here. Also, at the time of making this video, NVIDIA stock is the best performing stock in the S&P 500 year to date this year. In the past 5 years, you can see NVIDIA also outperformed the S&P function by a large margin. In terms of market cap, Nvidia is the 6th largest publicly traded company in the world. In comparison, if you look at Nvidia's earnings, Nvidia is only ranked 322 compared to other publicly traded companies. If you're interested in Nvidia stock, you will want to know, is Nvidia stock substantially overvalued now? And is Nvidia stock a buy, hold, or sell now? I'm going to answer these questions by talking about these topics in this video. Nvidia's biggest risk you should know, Nvidia's long-term growth prospects. Is Nvidia stock over while you now, and is Nvidia stock a buy, hold, or sell now? If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent stock reviews and investing videos every week that will help you become a great investor. Each video usually takes me 20 to 30 hours to make, so if you like this channel and want to support it, check out my Patreon blog in the video description. Our goal is to help our members grow their stock portfolios to over 7 figures over time. Once you become a Patreon member, you can follow all the stocks I'm investing in for the long term and download the latest intrinsic value calculators for all the stocks I'm analyzing, so you will know when a stock becomes undervalued, fairly valued, or overvalued now. Also, you will have access to all my latest stock ratings for all the stocks I'm analyzing. The link is in the video description. Take a look, let's start. In my opinion, I think Nvidia's biggest risk right now is the large demand for AI chips that may only last for several quarters. Let me explain here. Obviously, Nvidia is benefiting the most from the current AI boom. This is because Nvidia's data center AI GPUs such as A100 and H100 and AI supercomputers such as the upcoming DGX Grace Hopper GH200 are best for AI applications and AI workloads. All the largest companies such as Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Meta, and Oracle are investing in Nvidia's data center GPUs and AI supercomputers because they want to incorporate generative AI capabilities and large language models in their services. Obviously, all of them want to stay competitive and become the market leader in their businesses. For example, Microsoft is offering many AI services on its Azure cloud platform. Microsoft Bing also has an AI chatbot that's powered by OpenAI's GPT-4. OpenAI uses thousands of NVIDIA's A100 GPUs to train ChatGPT and very likely bank AI chatbots. I believe NVIDIA's biggest risk is this. If you look at this here, you can see NVIDIA's current market cap is near the peak, close to 1 trillion. In my opinion, Nvidia's stock price is priced at perfection. This means the market is assuming that the demand for Nvidia's AI chips and AI supercomputers will continue to be very high for at least several years, not just for several quarters. Also, there was likely a large short squeeze right after Nvidia's release of its earnings. Many short sellers took huge losses and decided to cover their losses. This is why the stock saw as much as 26% recently right after Nvidia's release its earnings. If you look at these financials here, you can see Nvidia is earning the most revenues from the data center business, even more than the gaming business. Nvidia's data center business is expected to grow significantly going forward, at least throughout 2023, because of the large demand for generative AI and large language models. Based on one note, the AI training typically needs much more computing power than AI inference. This means the largest cloud providers such as Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and Oracle Cloud are likely investing a lot more in Nvidia's data center GPUs and AI supercomputers now for AI training. 
After they build their large language models, they may eventually slow down their investments in NVIDIA's AI chips and AI supercomputers. In the short term, I believe NVIDIA's data center business will likely have very high growth rates over the next several quarters throughout 2023 and possibly throughout 2024. Because of the large demand for generative AI and large language models using NVIDIA GPUs, then the biggest risk is this, if the AI demand slows down later on, let's say after 2024, NVIDIA's data center's revenue growth will also slow down. Here's one recent example, NVIDIA stocks dropped as much as 66% between the peak in November 2021 and the bottom in October 2022, after the crypto market crashed. The demand for NVIDIA's discrete GPUs dropped significantly during this period because of the crypto market crash, too much GPU inventory in the market, much lower PC sales, broader market sell-off, high inflation inflation does affecting everyone, rising interest rates, the US restricting NVIDIA from sending the most advanced AI chips such as A100 and H100 GPUs to China, and the large downturn in the semiconductor market. Here is another example. According to this data here, NVIDIA's future purchase commitments are the highest in fiscal 2024 and fiscal 2025. Fiscal 2025 is between February 2024 and January 2025, so it's mostly 2024. Typically, if NVIDIA expects that there is a large demand for AI chips, they will order a lot more inventory and supplies from their suppliers at least several months in advance. I think this future purchase commitment suggests that the demand for NVIDIA's AI chips and supercomputers should be the highest between now and fiscal 2025. Then management expects that the demand may slow down to a more reasonable level after fiscal 2025. Of course, it's very hard to predict how long the demand for NVIDIA's AI GPUs and supercomputers will last. The market is assuming that NVIDIA will continue to have very high revenue growth rates for at least several years, driven by generative AI, large language models, and other AI applications. I want to show you NVIDIA's most recent financials here. In the most recent quarter here, you can see NVIDIA had around 15 billion of cash and marketable securities. In comparison, NVIDIA had nearly 12 billion of debts and operating lease liabilities. This means NVIDIA can pay off all its debts and operating lease liabilities and still have around 3 billion of cash left. This suggests that NVIDIA has a strong balance sheet and does not have a lot of debts. Going forward, NVIDIA's quarterly revenue growth should be mainly driven by its data center business, followed by its gaming business. Last year in 2022, you can see NVIDIA's quarterly revenue did drop a lot because of the crypto market crash, excess GPU inventory in the market, much lower PC sales, and much lower demand for GPUs I talked about earlier. At the time of making this video, NVIDIA's quarterly revenue is recovering quickly, driven by generative AI and large language models. Similar to most semiconductor companies, NVIDIA's business is very cyclical. Here, you can see NVIDIA's past quarterly operating income did fluctuate a lot. NVIDIA's quarterly revenue and operating income growth are largely depending on the demand for data centers, AI chips, gaming GPUs, and gaming PCs every quarter. You can see the same story here, NVIDIA's free cash flow is also very cyclical. NVIDIA is in a very cyclical semiconductor industry. NVIDIA's free cash flow growth is largely depending on the demand for AI chips, gaming GPUs, and gaming PCs every quarter. When it comes to investing, we have to be forward-looking instead of backward-looking, so let's talk about NVIDIA's competition and long-term prospects here. NVIDIA's biggest competitor is AMD in the consumer discrete GPU market and the data center GPU market. As of now, NVIDIA is still far ahead of AMD in the GPU market, especially in AI applications and AI workloads. NVIDIA is essentially a monopoly in both server GPUs and consumer discrete GPUs. For example, according to TrendForce, in terms of the market share for server GPUs, NVIDIA controls about 80% of the market share, while AMD controls about 20% of the market share. Based on the other articles I read, NVIDIA's market share for server GPUs should be much higher at around 90%. In the consumer discrete GPU market, NVIDIA has dominated this market with the biggest market share for many years already. For example, at the end of 2022, NVIDIA had a market share of over 80% in the discrete GPU market. If you're a computer gamer like me, you will know that most PC gamers prefer high-end GPUs from NVIDIA if money is not the issue. This is because NVIDIA makes the best high-performance GPUs that can cost over $1,000 each. 
and Media usually has the best gaming support and gaming optimization for most games compared to AMD and Intel. This is one of Nvidia's biggest competitive advantage. Nvidia dominates in both the hardware and software platforms that are used for many parallel computing and AI applications. For example, Nvidia's parallel computing platform and programming model known as CUDA is already very mature and well established in the AI community. CUDA is well supported by many developers. Since NVIDIA is already the market leader in accelerated computing and AI workloads, I think it makes sense for many companies and developers to continue investing in NVIDIA's AI chips, AI software computers, and accelerated computing platforms if they want to build their generative AI capabilities. Going forward, I think it will be very hard for AMD and Intel to take away NVIDIA's GPU market share because NVIDIA's AI chips and accelerated computing platforms are already far ahead of the competition. Of course, NVIDIA will continue to release better AI chips, better architectures, better accelerated computing platforms, and better software going forward. In terms of long-term prospects, I think NVIDIA will continue to benefit the most from generative AI, large language models, high-performance computing, autonomous driving vehicles, and eventually robotics. Here's one example. OpenAI uses thousands of NVIDIA A100 GPUs to train ChatGPT's large language models. According to this article here, ChatGPT will need more than 30,000 NVIDIA GPUs to train its AI models. At the time of making this video, Nvidia's latest H100 GPU can sell as much as $40,000 on eBay because there is an enormous demand for generative AI and large language models. If ChatGPT needs more than 30,000 Nvidia GPUs to run, OpenAI will need to invest as much as $1.2 billion in Nvidia's H100 GPUs and A100 GPUs. Nvidia has many other customers that are building AI chatbots, large language models, and other AI applications. For example, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, Meta, and Oracle are all buying a lot of data center GPUs and AI supercomputers from Nvidia right now. Here is one example that shows Nvidia is expected to have very high revenue growth rates over the next several quarters. According to the latest earnings here, Nvidia's revenue is expected to be 11 billion for the second quarter of fiscal 2024. This revenue guidance is more than 50% higher than analyst estimates of 7.15 billion in Q2. The most important part is this: it shows Nvidia's data center business is expected to have very high growth rates at least over the next several quarters. Expect quarter over quarter growth to largely be driven by data center, reflecting a steep increase in demand related to generative AI and large language models. This demand has extended our data center visibility over a few quarters, and we have procured substantially higher supply for the second half of the year. I want to share with you the most important parts of Nvidia's latest earnings call. Management said this, let me give you some color across our three major customer categories, cloud service providers or CSPS, consumer internet companies, and enterprises. First, cloud service providers or CSPS around the world are racing to deploy our flagship Hopper and Ampere architecture attributes to meet the surge in interest from both enterprise and consumer AI applications for training and inference. Multiple cloud service providers announced the availability of H100 on their platforms, including private previews at Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, upcoming offerings at AWS, and general-level availability at emerging GPU-specialized cloud providers like CoreWeave and Lambda. In addition to enterprise AI adoption, these cloud service providers are serving strong demand for H100 from generative AI pioneers. Second, consumer internet companies are also at the forefront of adopting generative AI and deep learning-based recommendation systems, driving strong growth. For example, Meta has now deployed its H100 Power Grants Teton AI supercomputer for its AI app production and research teams. Third, enterprise demand for AI and accelerated computing is strong. We're seeing momentum in verticals such as automotive, financial services, healthcare, and telecom, where AI and accelerated computing are quickly becoming integral to consumers' innovation roadmaps and competitive positioning. For example, Bloomberg announced it has a 50 billion parameter model, Bloomberg GPT, to help with financial natural language processing tasks such as sentiment analysis, name entity recognition, news classification, and question answering. When generative AI came along, it triggered a killer app for this computing platform that's been in preparation for some time. And so now we see ourselves in two simultaneous transitions. The world's one trillion data center is nearly populated entirely by CPUs today, and it's growing, of course. 
But over the last four years, quite a one trillion worth of infrastructure installed, and it's all completely based on CPUs and dumb NICS, and it's basically unaccelerated. In the future, it's fairly clear now with this, with generative AI becoming the primary workload of most of the world's data centers generating information. It's very clear now the fact that accelerated computing is so energy efficient that the budget of the data center will shift very dramatically towards accelerated computing, and you're seeing that now. We're going through that moment right now as we speak. While the world's data center capex budget is limited, but at the same time, we're seeing incredible orders to retool the world's data centers. And so I think you're starting. You're seeing the beginning of quite a ten-year transition to basically recycle or reclaim the world's data centers and build it out as accelerated computing. You have a plenty dramatic shift in the span of the data center from traditional computing and to accelerated computing with smart NICS, smart switch, of course GPUs. And the workload is going to be predominantly generative AI. In terms of revenue forecast, Wall Street analysts expect Nvidia's revenue to grow as much as 58.83% in 2023 because of the enormous demand for generative AI and large language models that use Nvidia GPUs. Then they expect that Nvidia's revenue growth will slow down to lower double-digit growth rates afterward. In terms of EPS forecast, Wall Street analysts expect that Nvidia will have a very high EPS growth rate in 2023. Then Nvidia's EPS growth should slow down to a more reasonable level afterward. I think both forecasts assume that there will be a pull for demand for Nvidia's AI chips and supercomputers at least in 2023. So is Nvidia stock overvalued now? In my opinion, I think Nvidia is likely overvalued substantially now. Here's why. If we compare Nvidia and AMD's valuations here, you can see Nvidia's valuation multiples are much higher in every category. At the time making this video, Nvidia's 4 PE is nearly 40 compared to AMD's 4 PE of 18. Nvidia's 4 PS is 25.8 compared to AMD's 4 PS of 6.88. And Nvidia's price to free cash flow is 190 compared to AMD's price to free cash flow of 75. Here's another indication that shows Nvidia stock is likely substantially overvalued. Management said we did not repurchase any shares during the first quarter of fiscal year 2024. As of April 30, 2023, we were authorized, subject to certain specifications, to repurchase additional shares of our common stock up to 7.23 billion through to December 2023. Nvidia stock was much lower during the first quarter here, but Nvidia did not buy back any shares during this quarter. Typically, a public company like Nvidia, Apple, and Meta tend to buy back shares if management believes that the company's share price is undervalued. In this case, Nvidia did not buy back any shares during this quarter here. This suggests that Nvidia stock was already overvalued during this period here. Here's another indicator. In the past three months, you can see the number of shares sold was much higher than the number of shares bought. This suggests that insiders also think that the company's stock is likely overvalued. If Nvidia stock is undervalued, the number of shares bought should be much higher. I want to show you how to calculate Nvidia's interest value here so you will know when Nvidia stock becomes undervalued, fairly valued, or overvalued. If you want this calculator, you can download it from my Patreon blog. The link is in the video description. These are the key assumptions in this calculator. First, I define Nvidia's intrinsic value as its future free cash flows, discounted to the present day. I use the discount rate of 11.5% here. You can use a higher discount rate here if you want to be more conservative. I expect Nvidia's free cash flow margin should be around 20% over the next 5 years. Nvidia's free cash flow margin should be much higher once the PC market starts recovering and once Nvidia's gaming business starts recovering. I believe Nvidia's revenue growth should be much higher between 40% and 50% in 2023 because of the large demand for generative AI and large language models. Then I expect Nvidia's revenue will grow between 20% and 30% each year over the next several years. Let's go over these three case scenarios here, worst case, normal case, and best case scenarios. Under under the worst case scenario, we're forecasting Nvidia's revenue will grow 40% in 2023. Then we're forecasting Nvidia's revenue will grow at a compound annual growth rate CAGR of 20% over the next several years. If we forecast Nvidia's free cash flow over the next five years and discount the free cash flow to the present day, Nvidia's intrinsic value should be around 437 billion for the entire company or $176 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 25% probability here. Under the normal case scenario, we're forecasting Nvidia's revenue will grow 45% in 2023. Then we're forecasting Nvidia's revenue will grow at a CAG of 25% over the next several years. Then Nvidia's intrinsic value should be around 529 billion for the entire company, or $213 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 50% probability here. 
Under the best case scenario, we're forecasting Nvidia's revenue will grow 50% in 2023. Then we're forecasting Nvidia's revenue will go at a CHR of 30% over the next several years. Then Nvidia's interest rate should be around $636 billion for the entire company or $256 per share. I'm giving this a near a 25% probability here. If we add all these numbers here, Nvidia's interest rate should be around $214 per share. I also used a forward price to sales valuation model here to estimate Nvidia's interest value, which should be around $626 billion for the entire company or $251 per share. If we take the average of both valuations here, Nvidia's interest value should be around $233 per share. Just to compare, Morningstar estimated Nvidia's interest value to be much higher, $300 per share. In both cases, I believe Nvidia is greatly overvalued at the time of this video. So is Nvidia stock a buy, hold, or sell now? In my opinion, I think Nvidia is substantially overvalued based on my interest value calculation and the data I showed you earlier. At the time of making this video, Nvidia stock is still near its peak, close to 1 trillion. The market is essentially pressing Nvidia to have exceptionally high growth rates going forward for at least several years, not just for several quarters. I think the biggest risk is this, if the demand for AI chips slows down in 2024 or later, then Nvidia stock may eventually have a very large crash, similar to what happened in 2022. After the demand for gaming GPUs drops substantially, of course we won't know how long the AI demand will last until several years later. In my opinion, I think Nvidia is either a hold or a sell now, since its market cap is very close to its peak, close to 1 trillion. It doesn't make sense to buy Nvidia when it's near the peak. I think it's better to sell a portion of Nvidia shares now to take the gains. Then we invest the money once Nvidia is undervalued again, or invest in other companies that are more undervalued. This is one of my personal stock portfolios. I also have other portfolios with almost the same stocks and the same investment strategy. Personally, I like Nvidia's near monopoly in data center AI GPUs, AI supercomputers, and gaming GPUs. I had Nvidia shares in my portfolio here before. I made the mistake of selling my Nvidia shares to take the gains too early before, so I will likely buy back more Nvidia shares once it becomes undervalued again, below my intrinsic value estimate. Now, all these are only my opinions and my analysis based on my research. They are not financial advice. There are always risks associated with investing. You will need to do your own research and do your extra due diligence first before investing in anything. Thank you for watching this video and supporting our channel. This is Victor from the Intelligent Research Channel, and I will see you in the next video.